In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at these multiple major storms, some severe weather on the way as well. We just went through one outbreak, got through it, and now there's another one on the way for next week that we need to discuss, as well as other storms that may be of concern down the road as well. Let's dive into things that I want to take a look at tomorrow afternoon uh, on Saturday the 13th. We see that this low, this major low, 985, is now way up in Canada. It kind of raced up the coast here. Uh, it really oftentimes they speed up here as they get further north and that is what happened this time around. We did have some of this energy transfer to the south for a secondary low offshore of New England and this is honestly just going to cause some showery conditions down here for the northeast. We could see some snowfall potential in the very high elevations of the Adirondacks and Catskill so keep that in mind if you happen to be you know having a house on top of those mountains. I'm very doubtful that you do but if you happen to that might be of concern for you. Out west, the Sierra Nevada and other mountainous regions throughout California are also seeing some snowfall with a minor low over the borders of California and Nevada. This is also causing some pretty significant rainfall for lower elevation areas. And I think this is also a perfect example of major conditions in a not so major low. Sometimes we see major lows with really minimal uh, impacts. So sometimes the pressure doesn't really indicate the intensity of of the impacts and that's a great example of that now as we keep going towards sunday uh, we're left with a quieter pattern on this day as well except for a couple of areas still the southwest and i would say the west in general here some snowfall again in the higher elevations rainfall for the lower uh, and then in the northeast and great lakes uh, we do have some passing showers all of these appear to be in the form of rainfall overall the jet stream pattern is a small trough over the west with really a very expansive ridge for most of the United States expanding from the Rockies all the way eastward to the eastern seaboard. So we are seeing a lot of different areas seeing these types of conditions. By the time we reach Monday afternoon on the 15th, we start to see a lot more activity get going here. Uh, we see that there is a low forming for eastern Colorado here, 990 over those areas, creating some snowfall throughout some of the Rockies like Wyoming, Colorado, Utah here. Still some rainfall for the more medium to low elevation areas. Uh, that's the time of year that we're in where it's going to get higher and higher elevation for that snowfall out west until basically even the high elevations aren't seeing any. So we're kind of heading in that direction over time. Uh, we do see there's a multiple areas of sporadic showers and thunderstorms. I'm not going to try to point out all of them because it is most states in the United States on this particular frame. But keep in mind that as we reach closer and closer towards summer, this will be a pretty common occurrence where we do have just numerous areas of showers and thunderstorms throughout the entire nation. Uh, so again, that's going to become a lot more common here over the coming weeks and months. By Tuesday, this low is bringing more major impacts. I want to take a look at Monday evening, though. So we're backtracking towards about 5 a.m. On, on Tuesday, so Monday night into Tuesday. We have heavy, heavy, severe thunderstorms here throughout the plains like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and even some surrounding states where we seem to have a higher end risk for severe weather. So we're going to be tracking that, and we will take a look at the Storm Prediction Center's forecast at the end of this video, so keep that in mind as well, we're down to a 989 millibar low pressure center near Nebraska, which again, anytime you drop into the 980s, that's when we're talking about major low pressure systems and major storms overall. But again, sometimes the impacts don't translate with that pressure. This time around it does though. We do actually expect very major implications and very expansive implications. As you can see, the entire uh, Northern and Central Plains, the entire upper Midwest, uh, down here through the deeper south and even back through the Ohio Valley, we have pockets of heavier precipitation. Like always, um, we talk about this pretty frequently, this corridor here along the cold front is going to be your main area to watch for the worst of the thunderstorms. Oftentimes, the, there is exceptions to this, but this will be my main area to watch there. Let's take it towards Wednesday afternoon here for the 17th, and we see that this all spreads further and further eastward to where now we're talking a lot about the Ohio Valley for thunderstorms. Uh, some of the deeper south and even the south central states there for these thunderstorms and our pressure is at 994 so this is finally weakening over wisconsin we do see plenty of cold air trying to move in behind it warm air trying to rush to the north out ahead of it and this is obviously looking pretty similar to a lot of our more major systems that we've seen so far this spring pretty classic stuff by thursday afternoon we do see this reaching the eastern seaboard 
a weak, weak, weak secondary low is trying to develop near Virginia or North Carolina. Uh, and overall, I expect thunderstorms and showers to be possible throughout portions of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast with this really intense shot of cold moving in from the West here with an intense shot of warm air moving up into Canada, uh, kind of from the East there, the Southeast, I would say. Uh, and you can tell how this is going to cause a lot of rotation in here and a lot of instability as these air masses mix. So some pretty bad thunderstorms could be possible for Thursday. I will continue to watch this, of course. And by Friday afternoon, we see that a lot of this cold air has reached the eastern seaboard, and this is definitely different than what we've seen on a lot of our model runs. Uh, we're seeing colder air for a lot of the northeast, mid-Atlantic, north-central here, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, so many different areas dealing with this cooler air that has moved in. And it's mostly due in part to warmer air surging up the west coast here, which has created this imbalance where we have this cold air able to move eastward. So pretty interesting how everything's revolving around itself like that. We do have a low pressure system near the northeast. 996 off of New England. Lighter to moderate showers and snow showers here for higher elevation areas. Kind of similar to our previous weaker to moderate storms. And that one hangs around for a while as well as the cold air in the east. It seems like the warmth is finally making a comeback by the time we're reaching about Monday on the 22nd here. So this is around the time frame where I see this pattern changing once again. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS, see where we get agreement or disagreement. We see storm number one go ahead and move out. We get this more minor storm for the northeast for the early portion of next week, Sunday into Monday. And then we get our more major central plane system here for Monday night into Tuesday, just like the European model. 990 over Nebraska here. Severe thunderstorms again throughout Texas and Kansas, maybe even Missouri on this particular model run. And then uh, the following days will also feature some severe weather from this, including Tuesday there for areas across the deep south into the Midwest. Wednesday for the Ohio Valley and Gulf states. Uh, and then potentially by Thursday, we could see some implications along the eastern seaboard. It appears like primarily the northeast has the best chance of seeing heavier precipitation from this one. So we will take a look later on as we get closer to this one, how much of that really includes uh, severe weather or not. So we will we will track that as well. That cold air moves into the east, just like the European model. Uh, and then it makes a comeback, just like we were talking about around Tuesday the 23rd. We see the warmth has gone ahead and returned to the east here with more cold shots on the way for the west. So things have kind of revolved back towards that original pattern. Let's see if this ends up making its way eastward again. And it does. We see actually a cold front as well. So in this type of a scenario, we would be tracking this cold front, the boundary between the warmth and the cold for more chances of thunderstorms and overall severe weather. That is going to be something that we have to watch very, very closely. Uh, and that's kind of the main story until we reach about Saturday on the 27th. Take this with a grain of salt. This is very long range, but gives you an idea as to what's possible in a pattern like this. We have a 988 in between Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska. Cold front stretching down. It appears, and this would be a really big severe weather corridor that we'd be watching. And then overall, just a lot of precipitation nearby it. We see snowfall throughout the Rockies from this one. We see a lot of rainfall out to the north and east of it, even to the southeast of it. So this would be a rather impactful major system. So another one in the long range to potentially track, even looking pretty bad as we're moving into Sunday for some of the Midwest plains and overall deeper south central states. Let's take a look there at that total precipitation, a little bit less than our previous model runs. Uh, we're seeing a average amount out west, and I would say an average amount for most of the eastern states, unless you're in the northern plains, upper midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, or northeast. So mostly this northern eastern corridor and central corridor, uh, where we're seeing a majority of that activity. But still, this is a pretty considerable step down from what we've seen uh, in prior model runs over the past few days and weeks. So a little bit weaker of a pattern for precipitation, looking a lot closer to normal. So a lot less of that hyperactive um, activity, really. Even the snowfall reflects this. Look at how much we've regressed out west as far as snowfall. This is a sign of the time for sure, as we're reaching into late April, seeing hardly any for the Cascades. Pretty minimal amounts for the Rockies for this time of year, a little bit for the Northern Plains there, uh, but really the Sierra Nevada is the only area seeing a very, very large amount of snowfall. And then also some areas of Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. But again, this is still a very considerable step down from what we've been seeing. 
Uh, the Northeast still expects to see maybe a little bit, but I would take this with a grain of salt, especially for Northern Maine, as not all of these areas are high elevation. So this would be a pretty interesting system. Certainly possible, but we're going to have to track it as we move forward. Uh, the temperature pattern now looks to move into a warmer direction for next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and then Friday, we see cold return to the east here now on these models with warmth out west. But again, it looks like that's coming to an end by the time we're reaching early the week after as this warmth is spreading eastward for kind of the 21st, 22nd and beyond. So maybe back to a little bit more of a revolving pattern, which could spark up some extra severe weather events. We've talked about before how warm patterns with cold air moving into it is really what fuels a lot of these systems. So a more progressive pattern is going to give you more of those situations. So we will kind of monitor that situation. The Storm Prediction Center, we're already in the extended outlook. Let's backtrack a little bit here. This is today on Friday the 12th. We have a general thunderstorm outlook here for uh, the northwest in the lighter green with a marginal level one risk there in the darker green where we do expect isolated severe weather reports. Same story for the northeast. We have some general thunderstorm risk areas in the lighter greens again where we don't expect severe weather. Anything is technically possible, but just expect general thunderstorms. That is what we're kind of seeing here. And then we do have this darker green area for New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, believe it or not, where we do expect potential isolated severe weather activity. Now, as we move towards uh, the day after here on Saturday, April 13th, uh, we see a couple areas of general thunderstorm risk areas where, again, we don't expect severe weather at all. The only area that we're seeing here is over Oregon, where we do have that level one threat area. Let's move towards day three, which will be for Sunday on the 14th. Again, the lighter green is general thunderstorms, but we do have this level one risk, mod, uh, marginal risk for Indiana, Ohio, a little bit of Kentucky there, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, uh, a little bit of Maryland, and maybe even a little bit of New York there involved, where we do expect isolated severe weather reports to be possible. Let's go ahead and move into the extended range, what we already took a look at. Uh, and this is for day four on Monday, Monday the 15th here to start the new week. We do have this yellow area, which translates to a level two slight risk for a lot of the planes. And then we have this orange area here that it basically translates to an enhanced risk over Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, where we could have some pretty major severe weather on the way. We'll have a lot more on that tomorrow as this will no longer be a uh, extended range uh probability forecast it'll actually be a categorical day three outlook so we'll have a lot more on this tomorrow uh, the day after we also have this slight risk yellow area i do expect to potentially see higher than slight risk for this day as well on tuesday the 16th though anyway thank you so much for watching this video we do upload every single day so be sure to subscribe for more daily weather uploads just like this one you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.